My name is Melissa Barrera, and I play Samantha Carpenter, Sam. The horror comedy aspect of it is very enjoyable. The, the adrenaline of like trying to figure out who the killer is in every movie and being someone different is also very, I think, captivating and compelling. And the fact that the characters are so um, lovable, all of them in their own way, and the legacy characters that are still here, um, I think it just, it's, there's always something fresh for the new audiences, and at the same time, there's always something that connects you back to the originals. And I think that's something that people appreciate. People that are fans of like the first ones love that. I think it's gonna be, people are gonna be happy. I think that's why I fell in love with them so quickly because I was like, I love their excitement and their passion for it. Uh, the script already, I already know is good. I like the character. I can connect with her. And, uh, and other than that, I just wanna work with people that I like. Working with people that you like is so important to me. And uh, because all the other elements that I look for as an artist and as an actor were already there, I was like, oh, this, this is gonna be so fun. And it has been, it's incredible. I really liked the fact that she's an older sister. I'm an older sister. So I can immediately connect to that love and that wanting to protect your siblings. And, um, and that for me was an immediate like, oh, I know her. That's, that was a way in immediately. And then because she's such a rich character, so complicated, and even in like the few instances in the movie that we get to see that, I think it really says a lot about who she is and the demons that she's fighting. I feel like the fans are gonna be so happy because there's so many Easter eggs in this movie. I love the way that they wrote it and the way that they like brought back all the like the best things of like the previous movies and and keeping the, the characters that we know and love and extending their stories. I think this is gonna be a more emotional movie than we've ever seen. It has a lot of emotional beats. Um, and I think that's just gonna make it better. She's so talented. She's the best. Um, I think from the moment that we had our chemistry read, there was a connection. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, this is my sister. This is this is the girl that I have to protect. Nev and Courtney and David all said, and I and I and I think this is huge. Like for us, when they when they told us that this is the 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 vibe and the energy of this set is the most reminiscent of like the first movie, and and I think that's a huge compliment. And I and I love that they feel that and they feel like they're coming home and and that it's a good energy and that. We're doing right by their story and by Wes. Um, I think that's, that's really important to all of us. It's unexpected how much fun I'm having because you know, you think it's a scary movie and it's gonna be tense and like you're always screaming and running and there's lots of blood, but it's so much fun to make. And I knew, I mean, shooting a movie is always fun, but I feel like this has been if not the most fun I've ever had making a movie, like close to like the top. So I'm like, this is, this is incredible. I think it's gonna be the perfect balance of honoring the franchise and honoring the first movies, and then the perfect amount of like freshness and new that is gonna attract new audiences. I feel like this is, this movie is, I hope, is gonna make all the fans happy, like all the people that know the first four movies by heart. I hope that it makes them happy and that it gives them like something unexpected. And I also hope that like a new generation, like maybe people that have never even seen the first few movies, that they see this one first and still get it and get into it and then wanna go and watch the first four. Being in an audience, being like a full packed theater of a horror movie is the most fun because people are so vocal. People are yelling at the screen, people are screaming. And the fact that the, like your neighbor's getting scared scares you. Um, so I feel like it just, uh, 
it just heightens the emotions when you when you're like in a packed theater because I feel like this movie is going to be a whole experience that way. My name is Kyle Gallner. I play Vince. I think it's lasted as long as it has because I think the films are unique. I also think it it kind of breathed fresh life into the slasher genre, you know, and Ghostface has definitely solidified himself up there amongst, you know, the ranks of the big bad bad guys. Vince is a guy around town. Uh, he's he has a he had like a thing with one of the characters live. Um, and you know, he's kind of painted as a bit of this like outsider sort of maybe like creepy type guy. It's been kind of a strange thing because, you know, I've 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 reached a point where I've done that in like horror movies and other movies where I've played high school and the guy, you know, the people going through it. And, and so to be able to kind of see this new group kind of come up in that has been pretty cool to watch, you know, and to see these guys take these roles on and take this franchise on. And um, they're an incredibly nice, incredibly kind, incredibly dedicated group of, of, of actors. And, you know, they've all, they've all really stepped stepped into this world and you know and they're they're really um they're really here to to play and they're all doing a great job it's been it's been fun to be a part of i think it's going to bring scream to a whole new generation which is cool i think people will see this and then we'll probably seek out the original movies as well you know and and those movies still hold up i mean they're really good and I, I'm excited for that to happen. I'm excited for a whole new audience to kind of be brought into this universe. It's gonna be so fun for the people who are fans of the franchise and then people who are new fans of the franchise, you know, to see all these people come back and also not just be scared of the movie, but also be scared for these people you've grown to love, to be you're so invested in their lives already. My name is Mason Gooding and I play Chad. I am a fan of horror films, but even that took a little while. I was a big baby as a kid, and I couldn't really handle much, you know, blood or gore. It wasn't until I saw the original Scream with my father in my sophomore year of high school that I kind of came into my own and realized the entertainment value to be had in scaring the poop out of yourself. Specifically with Scream and what Wes in the beginning and Kevin brilliantly sort of crafted was the idea of this homegrown terror where you have a neighborhood full of people you think you know as well as you do, only to have one, or in the case of uh, a few of these movies, to two people be psychotic serial killers. And you could put as many monsters or as many ghosts or spooky things in your film I personally feel like there's nothing more horrifying than the fear of the the uh, domestic terror. Things that, again, could be all too familiar to you that end up being the most horrific things in your life. The cast in this movie is uh, truly, I'll take moments to myself in watching their performance, even whilst in the scene, being completely captivated by the way that they convey emotion, without letting it hinder the rest of the film, whether it be because they're guilty or they're trying to appear guilty while actually being innocent, is just the most inspiring and invigorating part of the job. David never ceases to amaze me in the way that he'll have such a, you know, scope and I'm trying not to use range because that's so overused when it comes to acting and doesn't do him justice to speak to his ability to sort of transcend, you know, character dynamics and tropes and become his own entity both on screen and off. It just speaks to his love for both the franchise and, you know, us as a cast as well. And I mean, if you want to talk about loving a cast, I could gush about Nev for hours on end. That woman has no right being as lovely and hardworking as she is, considering she is the tried and true scream queen. And despite that, we'll take moments to make sure everyone's feeling okay and heard on set and even out at dinner while we're hanging out. She's plugged into each scene and each action sequence the way that 
you know, you would hope, you could only hope as a kid the heroes you watch on screen would be. And I guess if we're gonna talk about from childhood till now, watching Courtney do her thing on screen was like mind blowing. If there's one thing Courtney is, it's present and just captivating and just monumentally exciting to see. I'm excited for a few things. Mainly I'm excited for people to see the respect that's been paid to the legacy and Wes and uh, the original screams as they were and how we've taken every step and precaution to make sure that people feel like their comfort horror movie has been respected and understood to the full extent that it could be. And then I'm just excited for people to see and to live with these characters in the way that they're going to. My name is Courtney Cox and I play Gail Weathers in this new version of Scream. When Scream came out, it was just such a unique film. The horror genre had kind of, it felt like it had been played out a little bit. And all of a sudden Kevin Williamson writes this script where he, you know, poked fun at other horror films and there was a lot of humor in it and it was so scary. And um, I just think it was a big part of pop culture. So I think people, that first scream will, I think, let, you know, be around forever and ever and ever and be always looked up to and looked back at as one of the great ones. I've done four screams with Wes Craven, who is this incredible man. And um, after seeing Matt and Tyler's work and hearing great things about them, I was like, oh, wow, this is what a perfect way to reinvent this movie. And when I read it, it was so, much in the vein of the first screen. Knowing that Matt and Tyler were directing this and after seeing their film, they're just incredible. And they are, they really know how to balance humor and horror. And, um, and reading the script, it was so similar in tone to the first one. I got really excited. It's, um, it's really scary and it's funny and it's, it's unique. When I read it, I was like, oh, I like when Gail is really cutting and, and competitive. So I, that was my only note, just to make sure we keep her that way because there's a lot of emotions in this film, a lot of heightened emotions, I mean. Um, and things have changed, like Gail, she's moved to New York, she works, at, uh, um, she works on a morning show, she's become more successful and more sophisticated and she's no longer with Dewey. Wes is such an incredible man and it's, it's like, I don't know, for some reason, it always makes me emotional because he's so sweet. Anyway, he is an incredible director, but he's also an incredible human. And he is, um, you know, he's, he was literally life-changing for me in so many ways. But like silly memories that I have, I remember the first time that I had to really scream. I don't know if I had been stabbed or had a gun, you know, been shot, I, I don't remember. But I just remember saying, well, Wes, what happens? Like, you know, you've directed so many horror films. What happens? Like, how do you do that? What does it feel like when someone, he's like, Courtney, I don't know, it's never happened to me. I was like, all right, thanks. That was, that was it. <laughs> like, he would just, he's had such a great sense of humor. And the last scream, I remember we got really like slap happy on the set. Something made him laugh. And I have this video of him, I was filming him. He got the giggles. And to see Wes Craven, you always think of him as like the, the king of horror. He is so silly. He couldn't stop laughing, couldn't stop. And you'd see him just kind of try to break, not break and be like, okay. And he wouldn't stop. And he's just so cute. He's just the sweetest man. He was silly. He was serious. He was loving. He was caring. He was almost like a father figure in so many ways. Um, he would sit and just like share his wisdom. But he'd also love to go out and have a glass of wine and be silly. He just, um, he was just an incredible person. And, and director. And as far as Scream goes, he was great at balancing the humor and the, and the horror, but he just, there was something about the way he would film. You would always see him leading up to something. You're, you're like scared before you were scared. It's just the way he would do certain camera angles or you know, you'd, you'd see him focus on something that you'd, or you're like, oh shit, what's gonna happen there? What, why are we focusing on that? And then you'd be scared by something else. So he'd throw you off by his visual um, things or you know, lead you into it. He just, he had a great visual style. I want um, them to see this incredible cast. Um, I want them to, you know, I want them to, to laugh, to have the same kind of um, interesting callbacks. I want them to, they're, they're gonna experience 
a movie that's very similar to the first one. It's scarier, probably. It's, you know, it's, it's how many, what, it was 25 years ago? So yeah. it's up to date in a different way. Even though Scream will always be classic, this is just like a, an updated, cool, hip, um, scary, funny movie. This movie should be seen with an audience because, you know, when you're afraid of something and, you know, when you're screaming, it's even scarier when you're in a theater with 250 people and everyone's screaming. I'm David Arquette and I play Dewey Riley. When I first got the original Scream script, I, uh, I loved it. It was just such a new take on horror films. It was so self-referential and meta, as they say nowadays. But uh, I don't even think they had that term back then. <laughs> but it really, you know, it took into consideration people's love for horror films and understanding, and it really gave the fans a voice. And uh, they, they respected what had come in the past, and they had fun with it, and they let you in on the joke. And I think that's really what connected with people. So when I got the script for the new Scream, I was really, uh, impressed again it really did a similar thing where it, it took all this information that we've learned and all this technology and all these advancements and the love for like the fandom out there for uh for people and horror films and and in the scream franchise in general and really like took all of those things into consideration it was really well written really witty really scary and uh i thought it was a great tribute to sort of the legacy that Wes and Kevin Williamson had created to start with. Well, I was really impressed by Matt and Tyler with their love for horror films and, and how much Wes had had an impression on them and how much they wanted to honor him with, with the making of this film and continue it. And, and um, that really touched me that, uh, you know, like myself, they'd been touched by Wes's work and were, were huge fans of his. So that really uh, set me at ease and, and was like, oh, this is the right people. And since Wes's family was behind it and Kevin Williamson was involved and behind it, uh, it gave me a lot of uh, just confidence that they were the right people to do this. They really want to honor the, the films that had come before and they really, uh, took that into consideration with, you know, the, the characters that return and uh, really just have a great understanding for story. They have a great understanding for horror and comedy, which is really important. And they're just uh, fantastic guys in general. It's really easy to, for me to sort of slip back into Dewey. I mean, in general, I, I usually draw my characters from aspects of my personality and some are closer to you than others, and, and Dewey's very close to me. I always love the feeling that he kind of doesn't feel like he gets the respect that he deserves. And <laughs> I've often felt like that, especially in the wrestling world. So, uh, but he's also got this really childlike quality to him that, uh, and he's really just a sweet person at heart. And, um, and, you know, believes in love, and love is sort of really the most important thing to him. He's a lot more rugged than he was before, and, you know, life has a way of sort of uh, toughening you up, and, and he's really sort of had a hard road. One of my favorite moments about uh, this film is seeing the group of actors that they've chosen and, and just seeing how they've bonded, and then being able to work with Courtney and Nev. <laughs> uh, and see them, you know, you know, it's something we've been working on for, you know, on and off for 24, 25 years. It's interesting to, you know, to, to become not a, you know, you're, you're like part of this his, history of horror now. And then you're working with people who grew up, well, some of them weren't even born by the time the first one was made. So it's like you're seeing this new generation having an appreciation for it. Now they're, you know, in the driver's seat and they're like, you know, these incredible actors. I had seen Matt and Tyler's film Ready or Not and I was really impressed by their skill and, and their sort of sensibility and, and how fun that film was and how wonderful they directed it. Um, so I knew they were incredibly talented, but um, 
you know, and then I read the script and I talked to him. You know, my my stuff was sort of more character driven, like my feelings about certain things, and and I understood the, the story they were wanting to tell. And as an actor, you know, it's really your role to help people tell stories and and figure out where you fit into their vision of what this story will be. So, you know, I've had my little <laughs> issues and feelings about certain things, but um, I trusted them and, and I'm glad I did because they really did a wonderful job. I'm really excited for audiences to see this incredible world that they've been a part of for 24 years and these characters that they've loved and to see how they've, you know, progressed and where they're at and, you know, and I'm excited to scare them. <laughs> I'm excited for them to laugh and I'm excited for them to see this new group of incredibly wonderful actors just giving incredible performances. I'm also excited for people to see Dewey and Kale together on screen again. And Nev, I'm just really excited for Nev to come back and the feeling that people get where she's like this badass again. My name is Dylan Minette and I play Wes Hicks. I definitely had seen Scream growing up, probably when I was younger. I, I got into horror and like slasher films, I feel like when I was young, so. But I think it took me when I was about 19, maybe 20, re-watching it again one Halloween with um, some friends, the first Scream. And I, I remember just thinking, like, how, how have I never realized how brilliant this movie is? And after watching it that one night, I decided, I was like, that's, if not my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. Top five, hands down. Like, it's it's because it's not only, like, a perfect homage and love letter to the horror genre in general and and like but it's also it's so self-aware and it's so brilliant and and meta and it's funny and it just puts everything you could ever want for like a, a pleasing movie experience all into um all into one movie and um yeah i just i just i love it so much i think that the reason the franchise has stuck with people for so long is because I just think it created so many iconic moments and iconic characters that um, it, that it's it's just timeless at this point. Like, watching Scream, it ages perfectly well. There's nothing dated about that movie because it was so self-aware from the get-go and so um, aware and of, of um, every single choice that it made. And, and it was satire. It was able to make fun of itself and make fun of the genre that it is while also being a completely effective slasher film. I don't think the hype of this franchise will ever die. It's just timeless. And they're a directing duo, um, which I'm not used to, not really used to, and I don't think anyone on this is, but they, they do it so effectively and it like is great because Tyler will go over and handle something really technical while Matt's coming over and telling us something about, you know, a note with our characters. And I just think it's a really, um, a really uh, productive um, and effective process. Um, I just, I just think that Look, Ready or Not was incredible. They are just so talented and so smart. And I knew that when I first got on a Zoom call with them and, and talked about this. And I was I was just sold by talking to them in one second. I was like, I really want to do this with them. I know they're going to make a good movie. Like, they're smart. I know. And um, just being here and seeing what we've been shooting so far, I was right. And I'm just so excited to see how it turns out. Yeah, I would just say that it's uh, not quite a sequel. And it's not quite a reboot it's both and it moves the story forward but also brings new life into the franchise and starts to focus more on new characters while also not completely betraying or ignoring the originals at all wes is the son of judy hicks and i think that wes is like when i first read the script wes just seems sort of like uh like the nerdy friend or something but as there were some rewrites and as i talked with matt and tyler more about it and once i started to read it with the rest of the cast um it's Wes isn't just a nerdy kid. I think he is he is smart. I think he's cool um, And I think that he's just sort of He's still a little sheltered by his mom and it's still sort of a mama's boy But he so he's like developed in certain ways, but just just still a little bit behind in other ways I think in the way he dresses and like um, and his sort of like uh, uh, His relationship with his mom like he likes sort of being mothered by her whether he lets her know it or not and but I think the thing about Wes is that he is, he's extremely protective of his friends. I think like what makes a good horror film is just making sure that like, 
the horror like the horror movies can be fun and funny but like when it needs to be scary it needs to be actually scary like people shouldn't be laughing at something because it's not scary and it's just funny and i think what that's what scream pulls off so well is that like you can be laughing one second and then but then as soon as ghostface is out there with a knife like you're you're really scared the death scenes have to be convincing you know everything has to go right the blood has to be convincing the performance of the person getting killed has to be convincing and the physicality of the killer has to be convincing and i think that um they seem to be pulling it off so well with this. I'm just most excited for audiences to see that all the original, you know, all the original qualities of the first film that made everyone fall in love with this franchise and make it as successful as it is in the first place, it's all there. Um, because it sort of acts as a reboot in a certain sense, um, it's very aware of what it has to do and what and the energy that it has to have and the tone and the scare is like, it, it really, I think I think it's doing a great job of of pulling off what the first one did. So I think that the old fans that are looking for that um, will have that. But I also think that new people who haven't seen the original screen movies and like the idea of Ghostface, because everyone knows what Ghostface is, um, that want to go see this will also fall in love with it. Hopefully, because it is like the first one in tone and um, in a lot of ways. So I just think that it checks the boxes for everyone it's scary it's funny it's thrilling it's it's a really effective mystery my name is nev campbell and i play sydney prescott well i thought the script was brilliant um it's rare when you read scripts that you know you, you start the first few pages and then you don't put it down and you read all the way through without a break and that certainly was my experience with it because it's just it was quick and sharp and funny and scary and all of that good stuff the first film for us was like going to summer camp it was just a lot of fun we knew we were part of something that felt like it was on fire you know there was something special about it but you still never know um we had no clue really of the success that this movie would have um and honestly, every time we do another one of these, it's like going back to summer camp. It's revisiting these characters, revisiting each other, lots of memories and a lot of fun. We all get along really well. So certainly on this one, to be with David and Courtney again was fantastic. I love them. We have so much history together. Um, it's, been, it's been beautiful. I certainly know Sydney. I know the character. Um, yeah, it's just like just putting her boots on again and, and getting into it. And the, the script really flows again and is in keeping with the other films. And, and so it was not difficult. And, and the other actors, I mean, when we get into a rhythm with Dewey and Sid and Gail, we all fall into it pretty easily again. I read the script and I thought they did a great job. I had been apprehensive about doing another one without Wes. Um, but I, you know, Matt and Tyler sent me a really beautiful letter. Um, expressing how they became directors and were making this movie because of these films and that they were huge fans of Wes and that they really wanted to honor him um, and honor his voice. And that meant the world to me to read that letter. So that was definitely a big selling point for me. And then the fans, I mean, the, I just know that there's a real draw. The fans love these films and I, people always ask me, you know, fans on the street will always ask me, you gonna make another one? So it's fun to get get into it again and give that, you know? The production designer's done such an amazing job of, of building the house to a T in a sound stage. Um, it, le it felt like walking back into the house. Um, and certainly, you know, there's an ode to Wes in, in, on the set. And um, so I, I, I got a little teary, to be honest, when I, when I went on set. Um, but it felt good. It, it, you know, this film feels like coming back to the first energy, which is really nice. They're amazing. This this young cast, they're just, first of all, they're uber fans, which was so sweet. Um, they're just so excited to be a part of the franchise, a part of these films, and so excited to meet David and Courtney and myself. And, um, and they're just, I don't know, something about this generation. They're just really special. <laughs> you know, they've got it together. They're disciplined. They're committed. They have a love for the art. They have a love for these movies. And they're really just a sweet gang. So it's it's been a real pleasure. I would just say probably, you know, what amazing job they've done with the, with the production itself, you know. And I think, if anything, working with these new directors and, and really feeling like they came into the fold in a, in a really beautiful way and it feels like a continuation. It's what people love about these films. It includes the fun, it includes the scare, it includes the um, sort of meta 
feeling um, and, and the cleverness of these movies. Um, lots of suspense, lots of thrills. Yeah, just a continuation of what people love about these films. Wes knew how to tell a story, um, which is the most important thing when you're, when you're making a film. And I think some horror directors just get involved in the gore or just the scare, and you don't really feel engaged with the characters. Um, but Wes managed to do both. And with a lot of suspense um, and a lot of thrills, he knew how to time things in such a way that really got you going. Um, yeah, I think that was that's what that's what made him special. He had a twisted sense of humor, and he had a sweet, sweet soul. He really did. He, he was respectful, loving, like a father in a lot of ways to all of us, um, and mischievous, and so talented. Um, and you know, gave me my first lead in a film, which I'm so so grateful for, because these movies have done great things for all of us. You know. Um, yeah, he was, he was magic. He really was. People approach me often and tell me that Sydney gave them strength, that, that she was an underdog who overcame, that she was not a victim. Um, and as a female actress in this kind of film also, it's really nice to get to play a character like that, like a, a heroine who is um, not a victim in any way and does overcome. And it's amazing. You don't, you just don't know when you're making a film how it's gonna inspire people. And she has inspired people a lot and I'm grateful for that. I'm excited for audiences to see a return to Woodsboro and also for audiences to see this new young cast because I think they've done an incredible job. And I think, honest, and we see a lot of Dewey in this film, and I think it's really nice to see his journey. These are big theater movies. I know that, that Scream fans like to go to these movies not once, not twice, but 10, 15, 20 times. Um, they, they need to be watched with an audience because people get involved. People yell at the screen, people laugh, people scream. <laughs> um, so I, I really hope that we get to see it in that way. My name is Jack Quaid and I play Richie Kirsch. I just think the characters have to be really, really good. And I think with the original Scream, they absolutely nailed that. Not only was it a movie where it was a, it was a commentary on horror movies, but the characters were all so well written and so well acted. Like each of those, Courtney and, and David and Nev and all of these people, gave such iconic performances right out of the gate. And I think that that's probably why its legacy has lasted this long. What I love about this Scream is that, well, the original Scream came out during a time where horror seemed to have run its course and people were starting to understand the tropes of horror and pick it apart and they weren't quite as scared. Um, and then Scream came along and changed all of that because the people in the movie were like you. They understood the rules of the horror movies uh, that were out there. This movie is commenting on the idea of elevated horror, which is something that we've seen crop up uh, in recent years. We've had kind of a horror boom and horror is back in a huge way. And I love it. And I've loved all of the you know elevated horror movies that have come out. But what better way to celebrate the return of horror than with a Scream movie? It's, it's, it's exactly what we need right now, and I think we take this movie into really fun and new, interesting directions, uh, and I can't wait for people to see it. My first meeting with Matt and Tyler, they were both just so incredible, and uh, the nicest possible people you will ever meet who makes some of the most messed up things you will ever see. Richie is uh, the very uh, supportive boyfriend uh, to Sam. When you first meet him, he's working with uh, Sam in a bowling alley when Sam gets the news that her sister Tara was attacked. And uh, Richie's just like, he's kind of just the guy that you would love to bring to a party because you know he'll make at least one friend. Um, he's just a uh, all around Good guy. Melissa's incredible. She's so talented. She is exactly the perfect person to lead this franchise and bring it to a new generation of audiences. She's so talented. She's so hilarious. Um, she has all the right stuff going on in terms of uh, the heart of the movie, her and her emotional connection, especially with Tara, uh, played by Jenna Ortega. They're both so incredible, and I love watching what they do every day, and they're great people too. The three of them, Nev, Courtney, and David, are 
Some of the nicest people I've ever met on a set, period. Um, Nev is just such a warm, incredible presence, and uh, she's also Sydney friggin' Prescott. Uh, so she's just this very exceptionally caring, amazing person uh, when we're off camera, but when we're on camera, she's such a badass, uh, is, is not taking any guff from anybody, has been through this before, and I love everything she's bringing to this performance as, as Sydney Prescott um, now, when she's had some experience with, with people in ghost face masks. And she's been amazing and incredible and, and so kind. And, and Courtney is just so funny on and off camera. I, the, one of the quickest people I've, I've ever seen in my life. I mean, obviously, she, that's what she does. Uh, but she's, I mean, this movie is no exception. She's absolutely killing it. Um, and uh, David is the uh, maybe the sweetest person I've ever met in my entire life. I'm just excited for them to see like a good old fashioned Scream movie again. And one that, uh, man, I'm so excited for them to see Ghostface again. I'm so excited for them to see what we do with uh, the story because I don't think it's exactly what people are, are expecting. And I think it takes really interesting turns. And I, I just hope people uh, get to see a good old fashioned Scream movie again and I think they're just gonna have a blast watching this. Uh, let's see, is there any particular moment? No, it's all, I love it all. Like, literally everything. I, I'm, I love this movie. I'm Jasmine Savoy Brown and I play Mindy. It was just so witty and so smart and the characters were so clearly defined and I liked that my character was really funny and intelligent. Um, then I had a meeting with the directors and I just fell in love with them. And I already heard how lovely they were and I was like, I have to work with these guys. It would be really fun, it would be really collaborative. They made it clear that they love to include their actors in the process of creating these characters and they want our feedback. And so the thought of creating that, especially in such a legacy of a film, just sounded like a lot of fun. We talk about it all the time, how rare of an experience it is to have such a lovely, cohesive group of people who genuinely respect each other and get along. Matt and Tyler, and Chad from day one made a point of saying, we really want you to be a part of this. Come to us with any thoughts, concerns, questions, any ways we can make your character more like you. And I did that. I had specific pieces of wardrobe that were really important to me, um, specific things in the script that I wanted tweaked a little bit to reflect my what I'm bringing to Mindy, specifically as a queer woman of color. It was really important to have very specific things tweaked a little bit, and they welcomed that just enthusiastically. And um, I don't know that I've ever had directors that were that supportive and collaborative and really meant it. And I think that's gonna show in the movie, because each of us has a genuine piece of ourselves in the character, and we have been supported in bringing that to life. And it feels really good. Oh, I love them so much. We actually became really good friends. We started going to dinner together. We would um, get our groceries together and play board games at night and go to the beach. Uh, at one point we even rented a beach house and just like spent the weekend together and we really just like fell in love with each other. And so that chemistry on screen, none of it's fake. I feel like I'm making a movie with my best friends because I am. I'm excited for them to see these characters that we've created and the relationships that we have on screen, this chemistry is just so beautiful. Um, I'm really excited for all of the callbacks and all of the nods to the original film. They're all over the movie. I think all of those little Easter egg moments are gonna be so fun for the diehard fans. The kill scenes are great. They're so bloody and graphic and ugh, so good. And I think people are gonna like it. Um, the whole thing is just gonna be really fun. Oh, that's the only way to see a horror movie. And so many movies, that shared experience, that collective gasp, and knowing that you're experiencing something for the first time with everyone else. It's just, that's how movies are meant to be seen. Uh, my name is Jenna Ortega and I'm playing Tara Carpenter. I used to be a big scaredy cat when I was younger, so I wasn't really into horror, but Scream was one of the first movies I watched to kind of break that mold and kind of get myself out of, out of that, um, phase in my life and I've, I've always had such an appreciation for the franchise so so to see that script come on land on my table and um 
the opportunity to be a part, I just knew I had to. But also, what I will say, the deaths are pretty insane. Wes Craven and the original cast really did such a phenomenal job at, at making things intimidating, but also funny at the same time. I think it makes it more of a roller coaster ride, with, which people must enjoy. But also the whodunit quality, whereas, you know, you're watching the film and anybody could be the killer. So I think it's, it's kind of an interactive film in the sense that anybody who's watching or anybody who's a part of the audience um, is making active guesses as to who could possibly you know, be it. And then of course, when you get to the end and you find out, it has to be the most fulfilling feeling. I've never worked with duo directors before, so I wasn't really sure how this experience was going to go, but they are the coolest, funniest, but also they're just so incredibly talented and hardworking and and they're so dedicated to this film. I know when, when we were talking and even just, you know, taking a look at the monitor every once in a while, or they may give us like a peek at dailies, uh, they're, they're doing their best to honor Wes's original vision and, and everything that he created. So I think when, you know, when they approached me about this movie, it really is just paying homage and paying respect to um, this, this amazing love letter to cinema that, that um, Mr. Craven had, had laid down prior. Oh my God, Melissa is so fun. She's got to be, she has so much energy. And, you know, I think because she plays such a significant role in this film, but Melissa is just the kindest, sweetest, um, most outgoing soul. and. She is so talented and it, it's crazy because I remember, and she remembers too, the first time we ever had a scene alone together and the first time we rehearsed, as soon as we locked eyes, we were like, oh, we're in it. You're my sister and vice versa and this is gonna work just fine. Uh, so it, it's pretty amazing to be able to come on set and just form a connection with someone like that. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's just been such an honor and, and I'm so grateful. I'm literally coming from a rehearsal with Nevin and Courtney and it's surreal to watch them play these characters that I've been studying for the past three months right in front of my eyes and how they go in and out and you know when they flub a line or, or they make goofy faces or jokes with one another it's I have so much respect for all three um, of the original actors David, Courtney, Nev so to be in the presence and to be able to witness firsthand them get into character and um, and I, I don't know I think it makes this experience feel a lot more real I know every day we come on a set and we're like, oh my God, guys, we're shooting a screen movie. But you know, when you have them in, in front of yourself, it's, it's a surreal feeling. If you appreciate a good slasher film, you're really gonna like this one. I'm excited for them to see the new cast. And I say that because, well, one, it's, it's nice that they'll, they'll have that nostalgic aspect brought back with, with the original cast, but also the new cast, because I really do think that they are such great characters. Uh, they're so well written and, and so lovable and, um, you know, I, I really do th think that they fit right in with the, the Woodsboro community, and I don't think people will be disappointed by them. My name is Marley Shelton, and I play Judy Hicks. I think that it was really groundbreaking. Uh, it, Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson sort of created a brand new genre by sort of turning the horror genre on its head and being so self-referential and meta and creating a world that was at once scary and hilarious um, and entertaining. So when I was approached this time around to be in Scream, I was ecstatic because I have never been asked in my career to reprise a role. Uh, so to be able to reprise Judy Hicks uh, was very, very um, exciting to me. And I, I loved playing her the first time around and I I was excited and have been really enjoying getting to slip into her uniform, I guess, <laughs> again, um, figuratively and literally. Um, but she, and, and there have been some evolutions with Judy. Um, for one thing, she's no longer Deputy Judy Hicks. She's now Sheriff Judy Hicks. Matt and Tyler are awesome. Um, our radio silence team, a directing team. Um, it's interesting because it's, Wes Craven's shoes are big shoes to fill, obviously. And I think that they are the perfect people to take over Scream. And so when I found out they were directing, I was thrilled. I, don't, I can't think of a better directing team or, or to, to take over uh, where Wes left off. And I think he would be really proud of what they're doing and, and, and just their respect for what Wes has created and 
their their reverence. Um, I think I think they're really trying to honor him with how they direct this movie. It uh, definitely has its own story to tell, and I think that's gonna really get both the audiences that have loved screams of the past and also hopefully a brand new audience. David is amazing. He's so talented. So I felt a little starstruck because I just watched his documentary and I'm so impressed with what he's been doing artistically uh, that it was just great to reconnect with him. He always brings his A-game. Um, he's so ridiculously talented. So that was, that was fun, really fun. The new cast is so super cool. Uh, it's amazing how they've just clicked in with each other. They have this kind of natural chemistry. It feels like they've all known each other their entire lives. They're just so connected and have this incredible chemistry and energy. Um, it's been a delight to get to watch them work and work with them. I've been so impressed with our cast and crew uh, to have this like really jovial atmosphere on set and professional atmosphere and um, I think anytime you make, it's funny, when you make a scary film, usually there's a lot of joking and it's oddly a, a fun environment and that's been the case on this for sure. Um, we're just super blessed with an amazing group of people. So for me, this uh, just the collaboration has really been, been enjoyable. I'm excited for audiences to see familiar faces and some surprise faces. Um, I'm excited for them to get to go on the ride of a classic Scream movie um, with a lot of injections of fresh and new. I'm Mikey Madison and I play Amber. Yeah, I love horror film. It's one of my favorite genres and I was a really big fan of the original Scream. I think just the performances have lasted like Nev is an incredible actress, and I think a lot of the best horror films are really good dramas and comedies as well. One of the pitches that the directors um, talked to me about is that they were really trying to make it feel more like the original, and I just loved talking to them. I felt like I had good chemistry with them right away, which is so important. Um, and they just seemed so passionate about the original Scream movies and really tried to articulate to me that they wanted to preserve the legacy that Wes had created. and. It was so exciting that all the original legacy members were coming back, and I'm such a big fan of Nev, so, um, I mean, I was attracted to it right from the beginning. The new directors have created um, an incredible vision, and I think just the, the passion which, like, everyone, everyone feels about the movie, you can really feel that on set. Everyone wants to do a good job, and everyone loves the Scream movies, so, I mean, I think in that sense it'll be different, but also keeping with the the same vibe that the first movie had. David's incredible. He's so sweet and cool and down to earth. And um, me and uh, a lot of the other kids spent a lot of time with him. And I mean, he's, he's just awesome. He's so sweet and he taught us all to paint, which was really cool. But yeah, it's been great. I think just the scenes where me and, you know, my friends, my real life friends now are all together, it's, incredibly fun and I we all love Dylan Minnette so much so shooting with him is great and um yeah I just I everyone is like all these people are so talented and um it just feels really electric being on set filming with everyone they're great I somehow we all created like a really tight net um intimate sort of relationship that we all have now but everyone's great and and Everyone loves what they're doing, so it's been, it's been awesome. I'm excited for audiences to see Matt and Tyler's vision and Nev, who I know is gonna be so incredible, and just excited for them to um, get back to the movie theater and see a movie that is meant to be seen on the big screen. And I just feel like it's just a bunch of people you don't know all connecting and feeling something. and. It's like this incredible shared experience that it's sort of hard to understand, but it's just like this connection to complete strangers laughing or like yelling and cheering on different characters or booing. That's like, it's so awesome. When a 
movie makes you feel something like that. My name is Sonia Amar, and I play Liv McKenzie in this movie. First of all, the genius of Wes Craven, um, brilliant filmmaking. I mean, every single, we just, I watched it, the first movie, like 25 times, but every frame is so beautifully shot. The script is amazing. The characters are so well cast, but also it's just so self-aware. And I think that that's what makes it so special and iconic and it's meta and, um, and also just like, the, once again, like the mix of genres and how it incorporates these different elements of the different genres and it's witty and it's satirical, but it's also, you know, terrifying, gut-wrenching and just, and there's also these like touching, beautiful moments in it, which is why it's so iconic and to this day, people still love it. I read the script and I first read the opening scene and I was like, wow, this, this is iconic. This is, it's really set the tone for the movie. And my, my biggest worry at first was how are they going to incorporate the original characters and parts of the original story and, but still weave it into it and make it fresh and new and fun for like the newcomers. And I think they did such an amazing job at that. The script is so well written and you really, not only do you like find the elements of like the past story because it's like a continuation, right? But you fall in love with these new characters and it like brings such a fresh new aspect to the world, um, the Scream world. And I just, I was so drawn to the script and I was, I mean, also the death scenes, I was like, wow, this is gonna be good. <laughs> um, that's why I loved it, yeah. Liv is a new character. So she fits, she's, a, she's fairly new to the friend group. She's dating Chad, who's like this jock and, He's like cool and popular. And so she's really just trying to fit into this group and she's still figuring out who she is. I think she is at times a little bit misunderstood by her peers. They are the backbone of this movie. I mean, they are the legacy characters. And, um, you know, I like grew up watching these movies and I grew up, I was in love with these characters and, and, and it was so cool to be able to, you know, have them in this movie, I think there's, I mean, they're, they are the movie. So I, it's amazing that we get to be, yeah, one of, on my second day, I got to be in one of the scenes with um, Dewey, David, and I love Dewey so much. So I was just like, I, I was having the best time ever and I love David. I'm really excited for audiences to see the legacy characters obviously coming back and, but also to, to be introduced and to, and to fall in love with all these new characters. And, um, and I really am so excited for them to see how amazing Tyler and Matt are and what a great job they're doing with this film. And, and I, I can't wait to see people, people's reactions. Like that's why I'm think it's gonna be so incredible that this is gonna be in theaters. Um, I think the horror, genre is made for theaters and you know it's like a shared experience and to see how people react to things and there's a couple scenes in the film where i'm like wow people are going to be shocked i am chad valella i'm tyler gillette i'm matt bettinelli alpin i was the executive producer on scream i'm part of radio silence i'm one of the directors i'm the other director we are co-directors I just remember how much fun it was, like seeing it the first time and being like, oh, that is the exact experience you want when you see a movie. It's fun, it's scary, it's moving, it's got everything. And then I think one of the other great things about the franchise as a whole is that you kept getting it for years. You know, it was like you got the second one a year later and then a little longer you got the third one and the fourth one. And so to be a part of the fifth one is mind boggling. One of the, the moments I will never forget during the shoot was when the legacy cast walked onto our, our big sort of act three set for the first time. And just watching them have the experience of stepping back in time to the first movie, um, you could see how much that family and these movies have, ha have meant to them. And I think there was just a real, there was a real sense of responsibility on our part. And, and honestly, just a very sort of humbled approach, wanting, knowing, knowing and really feeling like we were, we were the new kids <laughs> on the block. You know, we were stepping into something that, that really had roots and, um, and that it was our job to find a way to, to move it forward, but to also really be aware of and pay respect to what had come before. It's the perfect blend of, of 
you know, a, a kind of a story that that brings new characters into the mix while also touching on and paying respects to what came before. It's a baton pass, ultimately, kind of in its in its most in its most simple of terms. It's it's a baton pass from from one generation and one legacy to the next. And I think also one of the things that Guy and Jamie did so well in putting it into the movie in such a concrete way is just like the first scream, and actually all, all of four screams, they illuminate something that's happening in movies and in culture at that time that you're not maybe aware of or you're aware of, but you don't have like a name for it, you can't put your finger on it. And then what they did, it was the first time, I think I know at least for me that I read it and was like, oh right, that's a trend that has been happening now that I, I never consciously thought of. And then once you shine a light on it, you see it everywhere. Dewey, at, at, in this movie, he's, um, he's grief-stricken, ultimately, um, because of the loss of his, of his sister and the loss of the love of his life, Gail, who has moved to New York to be the anchor of a, of a morning show, of a huge morning show. Dewey has stayed behind. Um, he's, he's, no longer, he's no longer the sheriff. And uh, he, I think, for the most part, is kind of in hiding. Um, and I think one of the, that, that was one of the important things that we really wanted to hit hard is that there's a character in the movie that is an expression of and, and is a way for us to deal with actual grief, right? To, 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 have a, to have a conversation about loss and what that, what that does to the people who are left behind. And it felt like Dewey was kind of the perfect vehicle for those, for those ideas. Um, and as I said, Gail is, is in New York. She's, she's left Woodsboro. Um, for greener pastures, uh, we come to find out that her and Dewey have split up, that he was there for a few months, and that ultimately just couldn't hack it in the big city. He wasn't cut out for it, and so moved back home. And Sid, as you said, you know, very wisely has gotten out of Woodsboro, no desire to return. But of course, when the hits the fan, she feels called back to, uh, to face Ghostface one last time. David was incredible. He, he, because, you know, Dewey's down and out. He's living in a trailer and he's not doing that well and he's kind of given up on life to some extent. And David was just able to embody that in such a real way without losing like the heart and the joy that is I think the reason we all love Dewey so much. He still brought that to the character and because that could have been morose so quickly where it was just kind of dull and dark. And David was able to make the character have all of that stuff happening beneath the surface without sacrificing who Dewey is. Courtney just has a, she has an energy. She brings an energy to her work that is, uh, it's super contagious. It's also just, Gail is such a fun character. When, when she's on screen, when you're on set shooting, shooting that character, there's just a sense of everything feels a little supercharged. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that is because Courtney is just so damn good at her job. And she's also just really, really fun to work with. Well, it's not Scream without Sidney Prescott, that's for sure. And we definitely wanted to approach it that way. And, and having Nev be a part of it was, was, was integral to our, our participation in it as well. I still remember our first Zoom with Nev, uh, and it, it, we were just point blank, like, listen, we can't do this movie without you. Like, this is not, this is not a... Yeah, it was like real talk. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> it was like all the bullshit aside. You are the movie. Like this is it all. If if you're not a part of it, what, what is Scream? You know. And and she was so kind and so giving and so sweet and just really let us like. She told she was she was she was a collaborator. I mean, she really like as soon as she got on board, she had really really great thoughts about how to shift the script so that it would really be, it would do Sydney justice. You know, because again, from us, from Guy and Jamie, we're all fans and we know it from the outside in. She knows it from the inside out. And to get that perspective was just invaluable. I think one of the things that's really fun about calling this one Scream is that there was a way for us to organically in the movie because of what the movie's about, because of fan culture, because of requels, to call it Scream and then shine a light on why it's called Scream within the movie so that the movie is making fun of itself for being called the same thing as the original. And that was really well stated. You, I'm yeah, that, you nailed there it. There was a that lot was really of ways good. that I could have <laughs> tied a knot. <laughs> but like once that clicked for us and we realized that it was, it was organic and integral to the story we were telling, we got really excited about calling it Scream. I mean, it was always our aim to, to create an ensemble that felt like a group of real, of real kids. And I think we achieved that. And I, I, think, I think that that has a lot to do with 
with diversity, but it also just, I think, again, has to do with, um, with energy and, and how those, those actors, that group relates, relate to each other. And, and I think that you feel, you feel the chemistry that we knew off screen with, with all of them, we think really exists in a, in a really distilled and amazing way on screen. Going into any pro project, you need to be prepared and on the same page. So when you hit the ground, you're able to, to, to make sure that that vision is like executed. So I, I think we, we spend a lot of time in the script phase and just going over the script and making sure we know our ins and outs of scenes and what we want out of scenes and what we want out of production design and, and, and then performances as well. So when we hit the ground on set, we're able to be like, all right, cool, let's, let's figure out how, you know, where everything is right now, where it needs to be. And, and it also makes us a little bit more malleable, I guess, when something happens that we have to adapt on the spot. We have to change on the spot. We're like, all right, well, we, we're all on the same page already, so now we, we're able to like shift a little bit and, and get things done. One of the things we discussed a ton before, and also with our DP, Brett, uh, was how do we make it feel aesthetically like it's of the screen world and also make it feel like it's up now? And like it's fresh and modern, and I think that was one of the big balancing acts with production design. Yeah, that was kind music, of the big with, challenge, I would yeah, say, right? It, kind it, of creatively. I think it's the biggest challenge is making it have that balance, so you don't feel like you're watching something that's totally divergent of what you know. What is it? The thing that we all love. I hope they get all the scares, all the fun that you you know that you're paying the ticket for. And I think I ho my hope, at least, is what they leave with is that they feel like they have a new cast that they like feel like they love yeah. and how, you know you, you they want to they want to want to know more about they want more yeah. stories william sherrick one of the producers paul nineteen one of the producers as well i was trying to place where i was when i saw it and i couldn't remember that what i could remember was seeing the movie and experiencing something that i hadn't experienced before which was an being as an, an audience member being allowed to have that much fun in a horror movie and that to me was something i took with me from that point on, in that you can do something in a genre that you're used to and then turn it on its head. Um, and I just, I remember being so shocked by that as a fan of horror movies and getting to this place where I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know that was allowed. And you, as somebody who always wanted to be in the movie business, when a movie shows me I'm allowed to do something I didn't know I was allowed to do, I just get really excited. And that was sort of the thing that stuck with me about the Scream franchise as I got into my career and then eventually getting a chance to make a Scream movie. I did not grow up a fan of traditional horror movies. It just it wasn't a genre of movie that I would rush to go see. And I was recently married, I think, when this came, right around the time this came out in 96, or the original Scream came out. And it, we went with a bunch of people and it was a truly fun experience, which is similar to what William said. And it was the first time that I looked at horror in a different way, which is I didn't mind being scared and in a suspenseful situation when it was fun. Um, and it sort of changed my outlook on, on sort of the genre of movies. Every generation, every group of fans, every time you go see it, your, ex your expectations are met by the fact that we're gonna give you a horror movie that scares, scares you to death, but we're gonna have fun with it. We're gonna, it's okay to laugh and it's going to be culturally relevant to what's going on at the time. It takes some of the expectations that you have of traditional horror movies and flips them around a little bit. And I think anytime you have something that is hitting a bunch of different sort of areas of enjoyment for yourself and it, it is smart, it, it elevates all of it. The more I looked at it, it was less about what Wes did in filmmaking in the past and much more the responsibility that came on us to make sure that this was something that was authentic to that franchise and his voice. Um, and it's something that we, from the beginning, looked at to say, not only for us in our careers, it was the right way to approach the movie, but if we're really gonna make this and help this franchise continue on, you wanna make sure you're being as close to, because you can never replace it, what he brought to these movies. For us, he was our North Star of how do we make sure we are true to what Wes and him created. Uh, paying homage to West, but giving it to a new, a new band of filmmakers that is Radio Silence, um, and allowing them to succeed in the franchise on their own, but paying homage to, to the great Wes Craven. Um, Kevin was that for us. He was that North Star. These young cast members just did such a spectacular job and had to run with this flame that, that Nev, Courtney, and David brought to the table.
And it was hard because when we went into it, we knew what, who we wanted with the legacy cast, right? And we knew we'd get to the place with the new cast. But you weren't sure when we wrote the script and we first went out that we were going to get the legacy cast. So it became a very interesting puzzle, making sure we got all the pieces that we believed in and needed for the movie. I think we accomplished everything we set out to accomplish as a team. I think that Wes is watching somewhere going, they did what I would have wanted them to do. Um, I think Kevin feels that way uh, based on what he's told me. And I think that more than anything, at a time when people are looking to have fun, I think we deliver fun scare better than anything I've seen in a very long time. The genesis of Scream, the first one, just began, uh, it started with my first, I wanted to write and get, make a living at it. And um, I was poor and I was starving and, uh, and I wanted to write a horror film because I thought that it, you know, it would sell. And so I just went to my, I said, I wanna do a movie that um, uh, I, don't, I wanna see. I just, you know, because I had all the horror movies, it was in the gutter, the whole horror genre, and no one was making them because, you know, they had just, they had fizzled out. And so um, I wrote the movie I wanted to see. It's nerve wracking. I was so intimidated by him. I was so scared. You know, he called me to his house. That was our first meeting. He, you know, he summoned me to his house and, and I was going to, uh, I was, he lived up like, you know, in the camp, up in the hills. And I, of course, don't know my way around. LA, so I get lost and I'm late and I'm sweating and I'm freaking out because you don't want to be the person who's late to meet Wes Craven and you know, he's my idol and I get there and he's like, hey, what's up? And he was so cool and he was going to give me notes on the script because he had notes and you know, and he hadn't really signed on yet. He was sort of like still testing the waters of whether or not he truly wanted to do this movie. And um, he started, uh, started giving me notes and they were all typos. <laughs> <laughs> there were typos in the script. He was like, eh, it turns out he was an English professor. And uh, he gave me all these notes and gave me a few ideas, but for the most part, we clicked at the beginning. I was just sort of that young kid who was just soaking up everything I could. It was my first film. I was just a kid. You know, it's so funny, because I had sort of washed my hands on this genre, on this entire uh, franchise because Wes was gone, and I thought there'll never be another one. And if they do make it, Good on them. I, I, I will watch it from afar and I will see it on TV or cable or I'll go to the theater to see it. There's no way I would be involved with it, particularly not after Wes. Uh, Pass, he meant so much to me. He was my mentor. He taught me so much. He was my uh, entree into this business and he stayed that, that hero in my eyes for, his, for the rest of his life. And um, so, yeah, I took it really hard when he passed. And, uh, um, and so when they approached me, um, when uh, Jamie Vanderbilt approached me about it, I was like, no, no. I mean, I just said no. I didn't want to hear about it. I didn't want to know about it. I said, you know, you guys go make it, go make a great movie and um, I'll see it. And uh, then uh, I met with Jamie again and he brought Guy along and they, and they pitched the story to me and I'm like, well, it sounds really good. <laughs> you know, it sounds really, really good. And, um, and then finally, um, I just woke up one morning and said, what am I doing? They're gonna make another scream. Do you really want them to make another scream and you not be a part of it? And so I called Jamie up in the moment and said, I wanna do it, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. And he was like, oh, great, that's awesome, that's awesome. I said, one condition, can we please dedicate the film to Wes? The entire project, the entire story, the end, and, and um, the directors they chose, Matt and Tyler, I instantly started like paying attention to them as filmmakers. And then when it came time for uh, them to choose a director, I knew they were gonna do it. I just knew it, because I knew Jamie had a great time with them, and I was so hoping that they were gonna sign on. And when they did, I was like, yeah, you had that planned all along. And uh, it worked out great, and they are amazing. I mean, Radio Silence is, uh, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna go big. I think they're that talented and I think they're that, they're visionaries and they have, you know, a, 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 they're great storytellers and they understand it from the ground up. And uh, I think they're sticking to the heart of the piece and I think that's what's gonna make this movie super special. To see Nev play Sydney again, because she's, you know, she started off as this sort of young teenage girl, you know, with um, ready to face the world. And then, you know, her first her mother dies and then this horrific nightmare happens in Woodsboro and she pivots. You know, and, and she tries to keep, 
you know, keep pushing forward, you know, she's not going to be a victim. And she just keeps pushing forward and then the nightmare happens again. And she has turned her life work into being an advocate for, for victims everywhere. She's pushed through the trauma of her past and she's destined to be happy no matter what. I look at these characters and I instantly see the beginning of my career because they were some of the first characters I ever put pen to paper and created. And so they're very special to me. You know, like um, uh, Dewey is, uh, was sort of a, a happy accident. You know, when I started writing him, I, I, I didn't quite know how to fit him into the story. So I made him sort of uh, a fan of Gail Weathers and that just changed everything. I mean, look what it created. I think they've done a beautiful job in the script of uh, connecting the dots and really sort of seamlessly putting this new cast into the world of Woodsboro and, and within the other characters. And they, they've sort of stirred the pot very beautifully, I think. And it's really kind of fun and scary. And there's so many new um, twists in it. And there's some new surprises. It's like, you know, there's a freshness to it where I think we're gonna catch people off guard and it'll be really fun.